Now from Boston, former Secretary of Health and Human Services under President Obama, Kathleen Sebelius. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Eddie Glaude has a question for you. Uh, uh, Secretary, when you look at the current debate around health care, the current bill that's, that's making its way through the Senate, what do you see as the kind of animating values, the animating commitment underlying this piece of legislation? Well, it's a great question because I have no idea what it is that the Senate is trying to do. And in fact, there are four bills at last count that um, I know are floating around the Senate. And it's very unclear which one of them may come for some kind of vote next week. But uh, it, we know this about all of them, Eddie. We know that um, somewhere between 22 and 30 million people will lose coverage. We know all of them costs will go up. Some of them premiums are lowered, but but people will pay far higher out-of-pocket costs, deductibles and copays. And if you're older or lower income, your costs are going to skyrocket. We know women will lose their choice of health care providers. For millions of people around the country, they choose a Planned Parenthood provider for cancer screenings and preventive care. That's going to be gone. Uh, and so it, it's very unclear is this all just about money, uh, money from the federal government, uh, but that money is not put in deficit. Uh, reduction. It's really going to be given back in terms of tax breaks to wealthy Americans. So I'm not sure what the animating value is. Uh, and I think what people also need to understand is beyond those features that I just mentioned really deal with some of the repeal of the so-called Obamacare law. But beyond that, the Republicans in both the House and the Senate are determined to go after the underlying Medicaid program, which has been in place for um, since the mid-60s. It is the most important federal state partnership that we have. Every governor in the country should be terrified of what is being proposed because it will blow up every state budget. Medicaid pays for mm -hmm. the birth of about half the children, about 40 percent of all children's insurance. It's the largest payer for nursing home care. It pays for disabled seniors and adults. So those populations don't go away. Madam Secretary? They just, those costs get shifted to state and local government. I just want to ask you a question. I think a lot of the Republican governors probably agree with you. So is it too late now to have a Band-Aid approach here? You don't have repeal. You don't have replace. We essentially have right. something that looks like Obamacare light with some maybe administrative adjustments to handle the problems in the insurance markets. Is that a viable and even the most likely uh, outcome now? Well, Eddie, I think, you know, people in the Congress seem to be playing beat the clock with people's lives. and. They own every piece of the real estate. The presidency, the House, and the Senate is owned by the Republicans until at least January of 2019. So they have another year and a half. I have no idea who set this timetable for this health care debate, but the smartest thing to do is pay attention to the other clock that's running, which is by September, insurance companies have to finalize rates in every market in the state. That's the law. They have to uh, begin open enrollment for 2018 in November of this year. So pay attention to that clock for a bit. Give yourself some time, but say, we're going to pay the subsidies through 18 and 19. We are absolutely going to make sure that we do outreach at enrollment uh, so people know that they have a chance to sign up for health insurance. We're going to make a special effort for young and healthy people to come in. And then look at what it is that you want to do. Uh, work with governors, <clears throat> excuse me, work with state insurance commissioners. That's where the insurance markets are. They can stabilize these markets. Madam Secretary, it's Donnie Deutsch. Uh, anybody who watches know I'm the simplest mind on the show. So I, I want to ask you a question I think transcends <laughs> either party and breaks it down to why I think no matter who owns this, it's an unwinnable proposition. If we make the decision, okay. as we do as a humane society, to give 20 or 25 or 30 million people health care that can no longer afford it, the rest of us are going to pay more in one form or another. Beginning, middle, and end of story. And somebody's just got to come out and say that. That's the reality. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a bipartisan issue. It's a mathematical certainty. And we eat. That's it. That's it. There is no clean solution to this. Well, I would, I would disagree a bit with that premise. 
if you don't give those 20 million people health care or if you take it away as the House and Senate proposals would do, we're still going to pay more as taxpayers. We pay more for every bed in a hospital that our insurance buys for us because that price goes up. Hospitals are providing so-called uncompensated care, people coming in who can't pay their own bills. We pay more as employers because our employees don't show up to work on time, can't do their jobs. We pay more uh, because our kids who don't have insurance aren't as well prepared to be in school. They don't graduate on time. So as a society, you bet the cost is there. But I would say we don't often count the cost of who's sitting in jails who, with a little opioid treatment, could actually be productive members. Who's under a bridge in our cities and towns because they need some mental health counseling. Those are costs that we pay day in and day out for uninsured Americans. Isn't it better to pay those costs and have those costs spread and have people productive and in the workforce and taking care of their own kids? All right, thank you so much for spending some time with us, Kathleen Sebelius. Heidi. Uh Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.